I remember meeting you back in the mid '90s, and I had all this. I had long hair. I was looking, you know, crazy. We was at Roseland, this club called Roseland. I said, Mike, man, I'm Tony. I'm Tony Touch. How you doing? He said, Tony Touch. Looked me up and down. I said, Man, Tony Touch, the DJ. I was like, Yeah, yeah. You make the tapes? Yeah, yeah. I thought you was black, I man. Did. I, I had said, no well, idea. I said, Listen, I'm Puerto Rican. It's like the same shit, anyway, but. <laughs> Here we go, one, two, one, two. Another episode of Hot Boxing and Mike Tyson. I'm Evan Britton. And we have an awesome guest extraordinaire, <laughs> the master man, the mixtape king. <coughs> Tiz only Tiz Uch. Ah! Hey. Talk I love that Tony. intro. <laughs> Let me catch my breath. Thank you, man. <laughs> Mike, thanks for having me, man. Good. Fresh off the plane, yeah. too. Yeah, oh, I'm glad to hear that. I just landed literally like, pfft, not even an hour ago. It's a good yeah. welcoming. It's a good welcoming, right? Here. I like that, man. Good thing the airport's close. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it was like everything worked out perfect. Yeah, it's called blessing. We're so close to the airport. Amen, man. It's a good spot. What are you doing, Tony, man? Man, uh, a lot of great things happening, bro. Tell right me about now. this new a mixtape thing you're doing. Yeah, it's a mixtape. Yeah, it's a mixtape film. We're putting together, we're talking about the whole mixtape culture from the beginning, Hollywood, Bruce, you know, uh, Brucey B, Star Child, all the way up through Kid Capri, into DJ Clue and K Slay, all the way up to now, to drama, DJ Khaled, you know, we want to show people um, how important the mixtape culture was man for many years, because you know, music wasn't really drama on the radio. Drama for a long time too though. Yeah. Drama kicked the Drama, ass. yeah, that's right, man. He's in Atlanta now, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, but mm -hmm. he kicked ass for a long time. And he took the rap, man, for yeah. you know, when the feds came down on the whole thing. Mixtape, yeah. He was he was he was the you know, he was uh, the dude that ended up getting hemmed up for yeah. it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it changed everything since then. But this he's still successful. He's got his studio, his label, his artist. So we want to talk about that because yeah. for a while the mixtape DJ was like the underdog. You know, we wasn't on the radio really in the, in the limelight, but we were really spreading the music all over the world. I know, but you were spreading a different kind of music. You were spreading them um, culture music, mm -hmm. music that they would never play on the radio, yeah. music that really would never. They played rap music, but it really never put out our word, mm -hmm. how we expressed ourselves, how we. Spread Spoke, mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. Even listen, when you think about it now, rapper's delight was really commercial. Mm, when you think right. about rapping, now, that was really sold out rapping music. When you really think about that was it, commercial, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Shout really out to commercial. Grandmaster Kaz, who's also in the film, who wrote the Sh Sugar Hill. You know? Yeah, so. that's listen, man. Listen, N.W.A. came in. What's those other guys? Bushwick Bill and those guys. They that's came right. and changed the game. That's right. They th they spoke for us. They did. And um, Public Enemy, they spoke for us. They changed the game. <sighs> they sure did, The people, man. then they, they told our secrets. Everyone knows how we feel now. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about us. Now everybody conducts themselves somewhat like us because that's the culture that we were. You yeah. know what I mean? We were just so taboo. We were so f taboo. Our parents didn't like us. We were different from our parents. And then the hip-hop come. And then hip-hop came and we just everybody if you're not with us with this our parents everybody and we have built this culture yeah that's right here we are yeah. man it's here amazing 20 you know 2020 music. that's music. amazing come the latin quarter that's what the play listen i can remember in like 83 and stuff like the 85 83 stuff if you were hanging out in those places you're a scum uh -huh. you know what i mean even your friend you come around you was, i heard you was at that place with that hip-hop bebop my yo mike that it's crazy. Right. You know, listen, you were the outcast if you you, you hung around the hip hop spots. Latin quarter, what was the other the tunnel? You hung around there, all the people there with the stick up kids, the criminals were there. So if you hung up there, you were really in bad you're bad news. That's right, man. I went to LQ's once, man. Yeah. It was crazy, <laughs> right? 87, 88. It was crazy, right? Shout out to Red Alert who oh, was he probably he took you there, he was there all the time. Every time I went there, I saw Red Alert. That's right, man. I got to DJ with him uh this Saturday night, man. Yeah. He's still kicking ass, man. Red alert, man. That's dope. Prop master. Prop master, that's right, man. So now a lot of good things happening so there's plenty of movies out there hip hop films and documentaries about rappers or you know this that and the third or DJ stuff even but this is a really deep story about 
how how important the mixtape culture so was. So listen, let know? me tell you something. This is how I got involved with mixtapes. Yeah. The first time I ever in my life ever, I never heard of, I'm up in um I'm in Bronx. I'm in juvenile detention center called Sparford in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And I hear people talking about the um Grandmaster Flash, Theodore Galore, um the L brothers, Grandmaster <laughs> Melly Mouth. Who the fuck are these guys? Man, who like get the fuck out of here? They come around here and get killed or robbed, motherfucker. It's crazy. They tell you crazy and these guys are this and that. I said, I can't, because they never had no tape. Then one day when I came back home, someone gave me a tape of mm. some people from the Bronx. It wasn't Grandmaster Flash, but it was Shaw Rock and the Treacherous Three or Treacherous Four, something like that. Wow. And the girl was like, Shaw Rock, don't stop, just get on the mic. And I was letting everybody hear this. And then I got another one from Grandmaster Flash, one of these guys I was locked up with. Wow. And, that's and this is Spoff. Spoff is in the Bronx. Yeah, it was in the Bronx. That's, that's why. how I met those guys. That's, that's why how I started was, getting those tapes from those guys. The, you was in it, man. Yeah. Mm. That's where it all started, bro. Yeah, and I didn't even know nothing about these guys. What the hell? I see some guys in Brooklyn. They come out and play music. They don't say who they are. They don't brag. Yeah. But they're playing music. They can't get on the mic. Hey, cut that shit out. No fighting, all right? But then they can play the music. But these guys say who they were. Motherfucker, I'm the king of rock. Mm -hmm. You know, they talking shit and like gangster real and all the gangsters hung out there. All the um the fucking outcasts, the people that are stick up kids, the people that pickpockets, the jostlers, the chain snatchers, the robbers, the hard arm the arm rob, everybody was there. Wow that's why. Time. That's why in the beginning time there was always beef at the rap thing because everybody was there. You might see a guy that stuck you up before Shit. at the music thing. Then there's beef. That's why there's always a beef that started off that way with a lot of beef and fights at the place. <laughs> Always something, now, man. Now, you remember, and I'm going back on yeah, when I say yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, you yeah, see that's... somebody just rob you, set this fucking club in my neighborhood, yeah, and your yeah, neighbors yeah, like, yeah. get my boy, let's get these motherfuckers. That's some Union Square shit. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Union Square. Oh, it's back amazing. In the day, that was beautiful, too, right? Wasn't <laughs> yeah. that Union Square? Union Square. That was hip-hop at its finest, man, the beginning stages, man. Wasn't even 20 yeah. years old. 50, wasn't even 10 years old. I know, man. Shout out Kenny Parker from Boogie Down Productions. He's DJing with me tomorrow at my Tuesday party called Toka Tuesdays. Yeah, now, now KRS wasn't with the most conscious KRS. DJ. He put, you know, I mean, right. he put you up on game, put you up on the universe and what's really going on after we die. He's one of us. That's mm. right. BDP you know? all dope. day. He's still rocking. That's man, dope, man. Still rocking. It's amazing We're how... We're trying to get KRS one here, too. Mm. It's amazing yeah. how the music captured the energy of this community, mm. you know, wow, and it man. brought all these people together. Yeah, See, and, 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 and it spread like so wildfire. Awesome. If you go from a religious perspective, even from, from Muslim, from Muslim perspective or a Christian perspective, this is the devil's work. Mm. Can you believe that? Yeah. Can that's you believe such, that? That's fucking. Can you believe it, that? It has been called that. Can you believe that? That's right. All the devils when they, when 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 Michael the angel left, he took all the fucking entertainers with him. You gotta hear that. <laughs> so all music is devil's music wow. now. Can you believe they put that in our mind for thousands of fucking years? It's crazy, right? That's crazy. Real shit. Wow, man. Can yeah. you believe that? Yeah. yeah. Can you really believe that? Oh, As human talk, beings, man. we really believe that. They try to take our fucking happiness, our pleasure, and they talking about brainwash. Yeah. Brainwash. Look how many years the um, religion had a brainwash before music, music even came to existence. Wow, man. Yeah. But we're blessed, man. Well, you know, and what Absolutely. God blesses, no, no, no man can curse. No you know way. I mean? Look at this. We're killing listen. it out here. All of us killing oh. it. Tony, tell and, us. And, 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 and getting bigger and bigger yeah, and famous. It's unstoppable. Listen. 20, 50 years from now, a rapper make Jay-Z look like nothing. 100 years from now, they'll look like nothing compared from the rappers that come in the wow. coming after us. That's right. The fighters coming after us. Crazy. The podcast coming after us. We're going to be nothing. We'll be obsolete. <laughs> You're right, man. <sighs> Tony, give us a little history of the mixtape. Like, how did it come yeah. into being? Why was it necessary? Well, in the beginning, the first tapes that were really done were like were live recordings at parties and stuff. You know, when yeah, they were good too. They were like, like they weren't dope. that clear. They weren't that clear, yeah. but they were good. Yeah, it wasn't no DJs making tapes. It was just recordings from the parties. You know, and um, you know that's where you heard the Busy B, yeah, Shantae, and all um, the, MC uh, Shantae, all the Shantae, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. So all the early recordings and then moving forward. 
once DJs got equipment, started making tapes at home and customized tapes and personalized. And it just turned into a thing where it became big industry, you know what I mean? And um, it was like one of the best ways for artists to get heard and, and labels to get their music out there. Sometimes, you know, there was not a lot of radio opportunities. Some guy so. would say, listen, I got um, DJ Clue. Yeah, no, no, right. Kid Capri. Say, I got Kid Capri tape. I said, what? Kid Capri's always on the radio, but he never did a tape. You always mm. hear rappers, so let's look at this tape. His tape is off the fucking hook. Yeah. He's talking like he never talked before on the radio. He's talking to you personally from the streets. Wow. That's right. And he's a big part of the film, too, Capri, because yeah. he, like, changed the game. Like, he took it from the... The homemade live park stuff to like selling making them people, shits yeah, in front and of the Apollo. making people come see him. Then come see him perform. Yeah. That's dope. And so it started an industry, man. And, you know, some call us pirates and bootleggers and this, that, and the third. So there's a love-hate relationship with the labels no, and the DJs that no, were doing this stuff. No. So we talk about, we just Listen, talk about it. So that's I mean? why you said the feds got involved because it was looked at as some sort of piracy. Yeah, I mean, I, I eventually somebody, somebody got, somebody had to deal with But how stuff, is it you know? piracy? This shit was made up in the I street. Know. This piracy, get the fuck out they of here. They want to control crazy. it, Mike. Yeah. You can't control they it. They want to control you it. You can't control it. Mm. Only thing they can do is to control the people who create his mind and make them think that the, these people are stealing from him, which we are not. That's right. Like all these big time stars, and this motherfucker is selling some shit on the street. He's stealing money out of my fucking baby's mouth. You fucking idiot, he's not. Yeah, man. So, I mean, yeah, man. You know what I mean? They think, you know, they, they want to actually beat this guy up for selling their tapes on the street. Crazy. Yeah. The artists, not, not the artists, the people in the school want to beat these guys up. Yeah. Hey, but Mike, uh, uh, you know, I, one of the reasons, too, man, I wanted to come out here was to also. I'm glad we're talking about the film, you know, because I remember meeting you back in the mid '90s, and I had all this. I had long hair. I was looking, <laughs> you know, crazy. We was at Roseland, this club called Roseland. I said, "Mike, man, I'm Tony. I'm Tony Touch. How you doing?" He said, "Tony Touch." He looked me up and down. I said, "Man, Tony Touch, the DJ." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. You make the tapes? Yeah, yeah." Shit, I thought you was black, I man. Did. I, I had said, no well, idea. I said, "Listen, I'm Puerto Rican. It's like the same shit, anyway." <laughs> but. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we hit it off from then, and you told me how uh, a lot of your training sessions and workout sessions were, like, off of mixtapes, yeah. you know, oh, hell yeah, continuous yeah. plays, so we, we wouldn't have to stop working out, turn yeah. the dial but on no the radio. Happens sometimes, yeah. sometimes you run, the motherfucker say some fly shit, you got to say, whoa, whoa, stop, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that shit back. <laughs> That's right, you get excited, man. Yeah, you know, stop, yeah. play that shit back. Yeah, Rewind it was an shit. exciting That's time. <laughs> That's, That's another awesome. thing, right? Rewind. Psh. Yeah, the rewind. Now just press the button, go back. I know. Are up and coming artists, musicians, are they still making mixtapes? Now it's still being used, but it's just different names for it. Some people uh -huh. call it playlists. Okay. Yeah, you listen, know, cause I was you got a playlist, that's to, a mixtape. I was on yeah. YouTube listening to a playlist because I listen to music. Boom, it's put a playlist. You be a, it's a radio station that plays music all day yeah. long. Yeah, so that's what, like, <clears throat> kind of like they got the idea from us with all of that you know what I mean like Spotify play, like, what they don't Spotify do though, but what they don't that, do yeah. the law side they don't mix yeah, yeah they, don't they mix. play you know it's continuous music but they ain't mixing like chum, chum, chum. right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's right. platforms out there that DJs use now to get their mixes heard like there's a mixcloud.com and soundcloud.com you got a lot of DJs uploading mixes live from this club or you know, different formats and stuff. So it's it's still vibrant, and the labels still use it as marketing tools to still get their artists, even artists themselves doing their own thing. Look at Nipsey Hussle, God bless yes. his soul. God bless his soul. You know, he he did this whole thing where he did like a hundred mixtapes, yeah, and sold them for like a thousand dollars each, and and like that was like genius. Like he had like such strategic strategic shit, and he was a big supporter of the mixtape and know what and mixtapes you know what this is the this is the magic of mi mixtapes than any other tapes mm. okay um the mixtapes you never fucking um you never get tired everything that's on there is what you want mm. everything's on there soothing to your and you know I mean your whole fucking existence mm. yeah everything you want nothing like oh fuck I don't want that somebody I just run to it anyway no everything is soothing to you there's nothing interrupting wow. you your whole existence is perfect at that moment. Wow. You know? Amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I've been there with but the no, that's, You feel that's me, amazing. though, right? It's, that's it's, amazing. Your existence yeah. is everything you want is there. Yeah. Imagine yeah. having everything you want. That's an awesome feeling. Emotionally, too? Fuck physically. Emotionally, because emotionally, you have it physically. It's just everything there. Yeah. Musically. Yeah. Inspired musically. 
music inspires people. Why does it inspire you? I know. We don't even know that about us. Why does this music inspire? Why does this make you want to fight? Why does this make you want to love? Why does this make you want to just be exhilarated? I've thought about that before myself, and mm. it's it's as if music is just pure energy because mm. we just feel it. Yeah. You know, we're not like thinking about music. Mm. And I've listened to these uh, tapes of this guy talking about, his name's Alan Watts. Mm. And uh, he talks about how, you know, life should be like music. Because in music, you're never rushing to get to the end. Yeah. You're just enjoying every moment of it as mm. it comes. It's about the music and, itself. And something else about music, it really, people create it, but no one owns it. Yeah. It belongs to no one. They want to own it. That's the thing. You know, mm. I, I, um, capitalistic where we want to own everything. We want to own our spirit. We want to own the people's souls. Mm. Music helps them own people's soul yeah. and their own perspective. Because yeah. wow. when you hear music, you act outside of yourself. You do the you hardcore gun, and the next thing you know, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. You know, and you find a way to make the music adjust to your personality. If you're hard, nigga, you find the music to just rock hard. You know, Keeps it, you it, hard. Keep you cool, though, but you know, yeah, you're yeah. Not, not no sucker character or something. You know, you find a way to adjust to it in your personality. Wow, man. It's a great story. No, but it's real stuff. You yeah. can't even control yourself when you hear the song Yes Life on yeah. or something. You feel it in you. You can't even control yourself. <laughs> you can't yeah. just stop eating. Yeah. Yeah, you hungry, you start, start dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I know, so, man. You feel that energy, that vibration come through you, dude. It's powerful. Yeah, there's no feeling dope, like man. it, man. So we got these parties we do in New York every week. Sunday nights is like Deep Soulful House. Where's it at? Uh, the Sunday night party now is at a venue called Chelsea Music Hall. It's in the Meatpacket District, 14th Street, 9th man, Avenue. Man, I remember that. By Nails used to be in By Nails, yeah, that area. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we got the Tuesday nights at Bar 13, which is across the street from the old Union Square. Got a rooftop and everything. Listen, cool, listen you know? let me tell you something. When I, I had to leave New York, I know why I had to leave New York, because I was kicked out of every fucking club. Jesus. When kicked out of every club, you're useless in New York. Wow, just, I don't care how fly you are. You're useless. You can't communicate. You're kicked out of all the clubs. I was fucked up. Nobody will let you in. Oh, no, I was a wild man. Oh, forget it. Fighting with the bots and the <laughs> bringing thug guys down. And they ain't never had thug guys down in these, and yeah. fucking these, talk, these kind of clubs and stuff. I remember, I think I heard a story at the tunnel with Big Pun and Fat yeah, Joe. Yeah, these guys trying to play Big Pun in them. Right. And then, what happened? He some shit, right? You, dudes, you chasing some dude around the fucking van or some shit? That's, yeah. that's what I heard. I don't yeah, know. I wasn't this is there. True. This is true. But wow, man. The tunnel. <laughs> Yo, yeah, listen, I was such a big listen, I was such a big fan. Listen, man. Listen. God right, bless yeah. pun. Listen, these guys were like gods, man. Fucking guys that are killers, fucking savages would kill them for somebody even it upset them. They don't even know these guys. They just love them. You know what I mean? It was like it was like the fucking ghetto it was like ghetto superstars for the first time. People in the hood with big respect, with big fancy cars. Yeah. The, res the police respected them and shit. It was crazy. And they didn't steal shit. We That's still rob and they ain't steal shit. Huh. Niggas out there risking their life every day. But these guys living, did look at these guys live the way they want to live, just like that. This is the way the hustler dream. The, the rapper, the successful rapper is the hustler's dream. Mm. He's the guy that like us, we're on the strip, we're out there hustling, trying to get money, sticking up. That's our dream. That's what we want. We don't know how we're going to get there, but that's, what the, that's our picture. That's the picture of us. But how do I get there from doing this? I'm trying to get there with this fucking gun, but how does this work? Wow. It's, it's like two sides of the yeah. same coin. But then he starts getting involved with this. Well, I'm not a rapper. I could be a security car with the rappers. And the shit just moves on bigger. Now he owns the company. So that's some shit like Suge did. Yeah. He's a security guard. Now he owns the fucking company. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A bodyguard that's now owns crazy. the company. Anything can happen, man. There's you no get so rules. inspired by this shit. Yeah, yes. Anything yeah. goes, man. You see this guy on welfare food stamps living in a condemned building. And next thing you know, he's a mega star. He comes around the neighborhood in Rolls Royces and Bugattis and shit. These cars cost millions shit. of dollars, hundreds of thousands. And these guys are just riding in the hood, chilling out. You saw his mother was a bum, a prostitute. I look at this fucking guy. Damn. That's how the hood works. Real talk. We come from shit. And next thing you know, we're in the fucking sky. Is it because you tap into your what you're supposed to do? No, we get the we we have we have a uh, we have an objective now. That's a goal. This motherfucker from down here, he's no better than me. He didn't go to school. I didn't go to school. His mother's trampy. My mother was on welfare. 
I, I could do it. Shit. Hmm. Shit. Yeah. So you just see it. You visualize yeah, it. These guys are still in the hood. These guys, think they still think they're bad motherfuckers. They got their crew and they still ride around the hood with their shit. Wish you tried to do some shit to them. <laughs> yeah. You serious? That's how it is. Yeah. And so motherfuckers get inspired. Say, Fuck. I'm in the hood. This guy got a fucking million dollar car driving around here. He's a rapper. How do I get involved? You know? Yeah. And then some of those guys, they're looking for guys that are hungry, wanting to get involved. They look for guys out in the hood, around that they're accustomed to who they know, they want to put on. It's all <laughs> about being at the right place and having the right desire. You know, everything's timing. In life, time has a lot to do with it. Mm. That's right. For sure. Like my friends, when I started making them, they never saw no shit like that. So they just started hanging with me, and I always knew them all my life, so we just hung out together. And yeah. everybody, and they just started, next thing you know, I said, Look, you need a job, because you can't just hang out with me and have no money. So I put them on the payroll. And now these, all these guys got jobs, because you don't want no broke motherfuckers around you. Every time they need a fucking soda or something, they got to ask you for money, and then they got to, you know, they got to become men. You understand, you can't be hanging around these fucking men. Yes, every time they need something, they got to ask you for a fucking dollar or a quarter. We have to make these guys in the, in, uh, independent of myself. Uh. You know, I, mean? I could put them on the scene, but they got to be their own man. Mm. And that's how that shit crews go. And they go on their own way and they blow up too. Hmm. Like you said, most of these guys in the rap game, they all know each other because they all helped each other one way or another, started out, they were friends, and even after being friends, they fucking had beef, and they just went their self and way, their separate ways, but they still made it. Hmm. You know, shit, it happens. Everybody, we're all one. Everything is one. You know, we're all connected. Mm. Even people in China that we never met, we're all connected. The birds, the bees, the fucking trees, the rock, we're all one. It's the universe. It's interesting. Mm. Tony, I mean, the first time you heard about Mike, mm. what was that? Watching one of his fights? Oh, yeah. Well, we're from the same neighborhood. Yeah, we're, from yeah, we're both from Brooklyn. So you guys, it's interesting how, you know, you... Yeah come into each other's lives it's, yeah it's wild man. you know over and over again yeah. Yeah, we come Isn't from bad, I'm from Brownville we're in the same shit Brownville East New York the same we come from yeah, fucking yeah, really right. scary fucking unimaginable places yeah. nigga you can't imagine I, you can never imagine that we gotta walk up them fucking stairs them hell elevators now the fucking elevator broke we gotta walk 20, 20 flights and be careful who the fuck you might meet in one of them fucking hallways as you're going up the steps, who you might fucking meet at 12 in the morning, 1 in the morning, 3 in the morning. You got to run upstairs, some weird motherfucker doing drugs, whatever. Shit. A crew of motherfuckers shooting dice up there while you coming upstairs. This shit is crazy. Right. <laughs> this shit is Not crazy. over there, man, but you know how things have changed now in Brooklyn, huh? <sighs> can't believe it. It's, it's crazy. Like, it's hard to live. It. That's for stops and you can't live. The rent is expensive as Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah, my dad lives in Fort Greene. Yeah, that's where I was born, Fort Greene. Were you really? Yeah, in Cumberland Hospital. Wow. Me, Spike Lee, Michael Jordan. Yeah, Spike Lee's dad lives yeah, right down the street. Yeah, we were all born in the same hospital. Yeah. It's a big trip, punt. Remember Big Un? Remember Onion? Un? Big Un, Un from Brooklyn? Yeah, Un Entertainment. Yeah, he yeah. was in the same hospital. Well, why do you guys think so many superstar energy, you know, people... Have come out of that area. They they got inspired. They seen people close to them. They seen them. Yeah. They seen it happen to them. They said he did it. I could do it. We used to be on the fucking same line for look getting fucking free lunch, nigga. He now he Shit. blew up. Mm. Remember free lunch? Yeah. Now we on the same line waiting for the free lunch trick. Now this motherfucker on television all over the place and planes and shit, driving fancy cars, riding around the neighborhood. I can do that shit too. Wow. Let me take this dope money. Let me flip this shit around. Now I can do this shit too. Because most of those guys in the street, they got more money than a lot of these celebrities. They just don't know what to do. <laughs> and they yeah. kiss these celebrities. I have to make chill out. Man. Let me, you got more money than these guys. Let me kiss their fucking ass like that, drug jocking on them. But they don't know. You know, they don't understand because they, they don't feel good about themselves having the illegal money and shit. But these guys, are, these guys are major superstars in themselves. If they went legit, they would be a major five, future 500 company from Forbes, man. These guys are geniuses. Superstar mm. hustlers. Yeah, incredible. How can they make that fortune? These are kids. They yeah, got so much crazy. fucking money, they can't even put it in. The fucking door breaks open and they'll crush them. You know, these guys, they're just street kids. 
the trip, man. <sighs> Tony, I mean, you've so, been, yeah. you've worked with the the best in the biz, man. <sighs> wow, man. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great run. What's Jay Z like? I've never really worked with Jay. You nah. know, we've crossed paths a few times. You know, and it's all love and cool. But who's I never his really guy? Who's guy was Clue? No, not Clue. Who was his guy? Clue was yeah. They was did the album with Clue. Yeah, that yeah. was a, a real successful mixtape album. You know. Shout out to DJ Clue, and they did a great thing with that. Yeah, you know? Clue fucking put it down for a minute. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He's still doing his thing. He's up on the air in New York. Yeah, Power 105. Clue's still uh, doing his thing. So, yeah, that's another part of the film, man. We talk about, we, like, we, what are you saying? We still here, man. Like, you got to endure a lot of shit where we come from. Scott LaRock, man. Did you know Scott LaRock? God bless him, man. His son don't be coming around. Yeah, he was around. a fly guy back in the day. Yeah, I never met him, man. God Scott bless him. LaRock but his son, his son be coming through, though. Yeah, he be good. Be around looking good. You know, doing his thing. And here Dope, we man. are, man. So on top of the film, you're going to do a mixtape as well, right? Yeah, yeah, there's an uh, album, like a soundtrack to the film. And um, what that is, is basically... Who's uh, going to be on the um, soundtrack? What was that? Who's going to be on the soundtrack? Uh, well, it's a Def Jam 35-year anniversary um, album that mm. we're doing, or at, like a soundtrack in conjunction with the film. So it's going to be like a lot of the Def Jam guys, artists and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, 2 chains and, you know... That's cool. Logic yeah, yeah. and stuff you, like that. Logic, and, we know, had Logic here. Yeah, yeah, Logic. You Logic's know, we dope, to, man. Yeah, yeah, he's great, man. So, um, you know, kind of like classic meets current, you know, we're going to revisit some classic Def Jam beats and, um, and and maybe get some of the newer cats to, like, rhyme on them classics a little bit and, and vice versa, you know? Get some of the, maybe the classic artists to who, rap who on the music. Who got you started? Who got you started in this? Who's the person you started? Wow, this is what I want to do. Oh, man. I mean, it goes way back to, like, Rocksteady Crew days and, and watching Crazy Legs and Rock kids Studios like me, were, you know, also, Hispanic yeah, kids. Bad kids, right? They're, the dancers, yeah, they're yeah, fly. yeah, you know. So Spanish kid like me, seeing these kids on the screen, like inspired me, you know, to wanna just embrace hip hop as a whole. So originally, I'm a b boy, turned DJ, turned, you know, producer, MC, whatever. But um, it started with dancing for me. Shout out Voodoo Ray, my brother Ray. You know, another active uh, dancer in the community, and that's what we represent too. Listen, um, I'm a New Yorker, and I remember when this hat came out, so you had a bunch of dancers, right? If they had really some kind of beef with you, they wouldn't fight you, but they had a crew, but they had the fighting spirit, the energy of fighting mm. when they were dancing with each other. Yeah. And right. it was just, and sometimes other people would get in a fight because it was just so crucial to disrespect, grabbing your ball, putting your head <laughs> in the ball, just doing something yeah, crazy. That's right. Man. Yeah, you, they, they make some other people fight. That's right. That's, that's where I get my name. drive from, that yeah. dance shit first. But you'd you know. settle shit, right? Yeah, we settle yeah, yeah. shit. Through the dancing. And at, and at the end, yeah. they might slap each other five, or they just might just oh, walk that's, off. That's the winner awesome. walk off feeling good knowing they win. But I remember that that was off the fucking chain, nigga. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. dance off, that was the biggest um, fucking brawl in the morning. That's, just that's fight. dope. <laughs> Somebody would have a stereo. Yeah. Or even turntables. Yeah, yeah, that's to be music in the with yeah. them or whatever. The boom, the box. boom box. That's fucking sick. And they're crews. There's crews that's coming around battling people saying I'm the best in the fucking city. Yeah. That's what you started out as. Well, that's what drew me yeah, to like yeah. the culture. Like I was like, I want to do this, you know. Yeah. And then I was like, oh shit, what's that dude? Over there doing because no, cause, listen, because why they're doing it, it's a crowd around them. Ain't yeah. now you're just not doing it, and people are just walking by. It's a crowd, and now they're now they're fucking performing, yeah, yeah. showing their shit off. That's exactly what it's it is. Now, they, now they're showing nigga shit, nigga <laughs> grabbing balls, flipping, <laughs> dropping the pants, all type of shit, flying in the air. That's right. Some of these guys flying the fucking air, man. Incredible. You think That's they're acrobats or something? Yeah. It's kind of like the beginning of that parkour shit. Have you seen the parkour mm. where guys are jumping off buildings and stuff and landing on staircases? Hey, let's and, check this shit. I want to see right. this. Yeah, let's see this oh, okay. shit. Well, it, it the way that they move these guys, it reminds me of how breakdancers move. Some crazy ass <laughs> white people out sick? here. Man. Yeah, dude, white people They're are insane, out of their bro. Fucking minds. <laughs> out of their fucking That's how, listen, minds. Listen, me and my friend were saying, you know, you know, running up the steps, how you get in shape when you run the steps and yeah. stuff. I said, I bet you some crazy ass white boys made. That shit running to get up the steps. Said, "Yo, man, almost got a heart attack. You saw that All shit? Right. All right, Free really? running. How do look you at this. look at this shit? Look at these people. They have Spider Man outfits. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe this, man? I can't be happy. Look That's at old guy. Look at this motherfucker. Oh. 
Listen, man. I, I mean, think back in the '80s, I could see a, a fucking break dancer doing shit. Yeah, like yeah, I could because I they know how shit. to fall. You know how to I fall and shit. move and hit the ground. A crazy ass fast. Puerto Rican right. too. Right, them Puerto Ricans be doing all types of shit. Right, they do all type of fucking crazy. shit. Thank God. Yeah, it's dope though, right? Just oh, the way yeah, they move they're... reminds me of breakdancers for some man, reason, you can't, right? Listen, man, you can't... It's listen, true, man. These guys do the most death-defying shit if you try. You think they're going to kill themselves. Yeah. yeah. For them guys to do the flips and the, 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 the fucking splits and... Oh, yeah, that's another you, level now. How do, they, how do you learn to do that? How do you teach yourself that? They've never been to school. They can't afford to go to school. How do you teach yourself that? Yeah, wow. you just are in the park working on shit. And it, at home, everywhere you are, you're just working on, like, how can I stress my body another way mm. but it looks like if you make a mistake you're gonna die yeah <laughs> if you make a mistake yeah. you're gonna die this is oh, true fuck, dude. Well, people do a lot of stuff if you make a mistake you're gonna die man, man. that's right Shit, yeah, what is dope, this? Tyson Kush? Shit. Yeah, this is, I Some know. Good weed, you, huh? Wowzers. <laughs> fuck, man. man. LA, what else what's you up, doing, LA? man? Are you in the cannabis industry at all? Um, you know, not necessarily. I mean, I still do a radio show on Sirius XM Shave 45. Dope. What's too, that about? On Tuesday nights on, on Shave 45. Um, the M M&M station mm-hmm. that we're on Sirius XM. Yeah, so I got my Tuesdays there for about uh maybe fourteen years now. Um, nice, and it's man. a great show. We premiere a lot of artists. We've broke many artists, and we still play underground music and all that. Like anything goes, you know. What, what I mean? do you think? Who's the biggest artist now? Oh wow! Sure. Shit. Um. Hmm. It's not like it used. I remember when it used to be Michael that's Jackson. A, that's a trick question. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Whitney Houston. Yeah. I'm a Don. You know who's the biggest? Yeah. yeah. Rick Springs. Yeah. Yes, you would know right away. Yeah. You just know. I have a favorite. Maybe who's your not favorite? The KRS One. Oh, sure. he's the fucking bomb, though. Yeah, no matter where you go, any part of the world, the like, you know, you run into him or he's performing he, somewhere. He has an awesome energy, huh? He turns it, you know, he turns it up, man. So, for so me, that's my favorite. I can't say, I don't, you know, the biggest, the maybe. I guess maybe, you know, to me, him. I guess. You know? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, if I'm a, if we're gonna go there, you know. But uh, what about you? What's yours? Who's yours? Or who do you feel? Who's my biggest? Who really? Yeah, your favorite or your biggest? I don't know how you wanna. Shit, I don't even know. Um, I like Rakim. I like Public Enemy. Mm. Eve, you know, I like that stuff too. Those, that's like my um, cannabis. Cannabis, is, but that's not that's not my. He's not my my forefront in fucking yeah, hip hop yeah. though. Those guys yeah, like yeah, Rakim yeah. and those guys. Um, um, fucking Run DMC. Rakim. Yeah, well, I love that that's shit. That's better than that, bro. Common, very conscious rapper. Latin quarters. Tupac. Tupac is pretty awesome too. Yeah. Biggie. Biggie's the best. Yeah, Biggie, yeah, great. All of them, man. You know, so many legends. Guru. He was good too. I man. love Guru, miss him. You know, he put me on like to a lot of stuff. Like to he was a nice guy. I met yeah, him a couple times. He was a nice he got guy. Got me a lot of work, man. So nice God guy. bless Guru, you know. And uh pun, shit, so man. Oh, love him. Love him. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nas is fucking awesome. Nas. One of the best. Well, dope, brother. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it was great, man. You guys got me high. Listen, no, so oh. trip. How do how do you how do you define the best who in rap? And who do, how do you define I don't know. Them? Do you find them from generations, from their time span, or do you say who's the best I ever heard? Yeah. It's like fighting. You can never tell who's the best. Yeah. On a good night, any rapper could be the best. That's right. Yeah. You don't know who he is. One night, everybody gives their best. It probably won't be the guy you think is the best that night. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's just what you're feeling in that moment, I yeah. guess. Yeah, depending <laughs> on the mood, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This well, is true. This is true. Great episode, Mike. That's a always good one. This night we're smoking, talking Tony, shit. Tony, great to have Brooklyn. you, man. Oh, great man. to meet it was you, brother. It's an honor, man. Thank yeah. you. Well, You're the man. It's amazing, man. Look this out for great. the film, everybody. What's the title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a working title okay. place right now. Nice. We still got that tucked away, but. Awesome. Um, you yeah, know, listen, you'll hear what, about what do you think? How's the world of fucking mixtapes dealing with the world of fucking the. Um, the com the podcast shit you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. the digital age the digital age yeah that's what we're you know we're gonna discuss and talk about how it's evolved basically nice. it's like it's just evolved it turns yeah. into that now you gotta 
learn how to make the internet or whatever. You got to make it work for you, you know? Yes. Don't be a slave to it. If that's what's happening, well, listen, I'm going to learn it and try to, you know, come up off it or at least stay relevant or at least find a way to just get it off, you know? Yeah. And make the internet work for you, which is what basically... So during doing. your life, people more so knew about your work than they knew your face, huh? When uh, did they start knowing your face? I guess, you know, I would say after, like, I put out that album in 2000 on Tommy Boy Records. I had this uh, major release album. It, was pretty, it did pretty well. It was called The Peacemaker. I don't know that. We did a video with Total. Remember Total? Uh, the rap group from Puffy. Puffy yeah, yeah, Puffy, Puffy, yeah. So we did that. We did that song and that single and, you know. I kind of opened up a lot more doors, you know, because it was like my first mixtape album. So I had a bunch of artists on the album, you know, Pun, God Bless His Soul, Proof, Eminem, you know, a lot of people on it. So um, it was like a mixtape album. It did well. And that's really what really like, you know, so solidified you do that thing. Do you have concerts now? Do you do shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my weekly events in the city and then I travel on the weekends, man. One one weekend we so could be tell overseas. Me, your so. weekly get, gig in the city is a place where all the people our age go? Or just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so like, I don't know where to go in New York. When I'm in New York, I stay in the fucking hotel or the house where I'm staying because I don't know where to go no more. I used to fucking think in my mind I own New York. I don't know where the uh-huh. fucking go. I'm scared to go out now. I don't know where the fucking go. We got this event I used to walk in New the York. whole world, dude, man. I don't know anybody. I'm looking to fuck around. I'm scared. The fuck? Yo, nah, nah. We got this event once a month. <laughs> the fuck? Once a month in New York. It's called The Originals, and it's me, DJ Clark Kent, Stretch on I know Clark, Stretch, I don't know them. Um, Rich Medina, D-Nice. Uh, yes. B- BDP, D-Nice. So it's five from of the us. Bronx. Yeah, from the Bronx. Right. I, I used to have a girlfriend live right in the same building with him. Wowzers, man. Yeah, Look back in the day. That's when we were young. <laughs> I knew everybody back That's then. Crazy. That now I go to this place, I know where to go. So we do this party once a month, all of us, for like seven years now. And the yeah. DJs are bringing in 100,000, 60,000 people. crazy, right? Yeah, it's a whole thing, man. It's a whole movement. It's crazy, bro. Here we are, bro. Imagine, imagine the DJs in the front. And I remember they used to always be in the back. That's the right. DJ, now the fucking guy's out front. He's the star. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, Tony right. Touch, baby. Yes. Once in the in house. In the house. That's what's up, man. All right, Love. Mike. Great episode, my brother. Smoke on, everybody. All day, every day smoking, Smoke man. Smoke on. Anything you want people to know, like where they can find you? Instagram, um, any of that stuff? Yeah, it's at DJ Tony Touch, everything. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Awesome. Right. DJ you Tony Touch. You should have a story Touch. about your life, man, all the shit you've seen going uh-huh. out in the club. Yeah, hell yeah. I could be the next film. I'll yeah, put this one out there. There you go. Life out there. It's the next movie, you know. All right, everybody. All right. Remember to subscribe on YouTube to our channel, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. I'm Evan Britton. I'm Mike Tyson. Tony Toka. We're out of here. Out. Peace. All right. That's what we do, Tony. That was what's up, man. man. (laughs) I lost my phone or something. There you go. I look at my shit, man. I thought I had to say.